Hello friends, I should be K. Meherwal, working as an assistant professor in one of the well-known engineering college in Hyderabad. I am going to explain today about the reflector antenna, which is parabolic reflector antenna. This is a part 2 of my video. In part 1, I have already discussed about the reflector antenna or of two types, that is of uh, parabolic reflector antenna, corner reflector antenna and flat sheet reflector antenna. So, among all these three, flat sheet reflector antenna and corner reflector antenna is uh, covered in part 1 and uh, now in part 2 I am going to discuss about the parabolic reflector antenna. So what is a parabolic reflector antenna? So these are the contents of my video. Uh, here we will see the introduction to parabolic reflector antenna then working principle of it. Then what is the gain of re uh, parabolic reflector antenna, paraboloid reflector, types of paraboloid reflector, fit systems of paraboloid reflector, advantages, disadvantages and applications of this parabolic reflector antenna. So, in introduction, what is a parabolic antenna? So, parabolic antenna is nothing but the antenna use, which uses the parabolic reflector. We have already seen that in reflector antennas, there is a reflecting part. There are basically two antennas will be there, primary antenna and secondary antenna. So, primary antenna, here the antenna which feeds the to the overall antenna and the secondary antenna which performs the function of a reflection. So, here the secondary antenna is nothing but a parabolic in nature. That's why it is called as a parabolic reflector antenna. What is a parabolic reflector antenna? It is a curved surface with a cross-sectional shape of a parabola which helps to direct the radio waves in a particular direction. So, what is the use of having the reflector antenna in a parabolic shape? Because it improves the overall radiation characteristics that like a directivity gain or a radiation pattern of an antenna. So, Basically, we have seen the two period, previously we have seen the two reflector antennas, uh, uh, flat sheet antenna and corner reflector antenna. So they were good, but their performance was not so better because the radiation was in multi directions. But if I want to make the radiations in a particular direction more, then parabolic antenna is useful. So the various fed antennas are used at a focal point for this antenna as a primary antenna and secondary antenna is mostly used as a paraboloid. Already I have discussed in reflector antennas, there are basically two antennas. Primary antenna which feeds to the antenna and the secondary antenna which reflects the signal which is has been fed by the primary antenna. So like that. So frequency range used for the application is about 1 megahertz. This, uh, this antennas are uh, used under the range of a frequency is megahertz, more than 1 megahertz. So as a reflector, uh, as a shape of paraboloid, it has a properties of parabola. Now, it is a parabola technically, it is a locus of a point which moves in such a way that the distance from the fixed point called as a focus plus its distance from straight line called directrix is a constant. This concept I will explain in this diagram later. So, basically what is the properties of parabola? So, all the wave originating from the focus reflects back to the parabolic axis, hence all the wave reaching the aperture are in phase. That means, suppose if you see this figure, in this figure, this is a parabolic structure. So, F is a focus or a focal point of my antenna. Then, V is a vertex point. Okay. So, what we are telling in this is that all the waves originating from the focus reflects back to the parabolic axis. That means, whatever the signals here on feed point, there will be primary antenna which will give the which will reflect the signal on reflector circuit and sorry, which will strike the signals on reflector circuit and from the reflector circuits, if you are able to see the points P1, P2, P3, that means the signal will get incident from fit system to the reflector side and from reflector, the signals will get reflect in the direction of a directrix that is L. So, this is F, P1, this is the path when the signal is incident from the fit system to the reflector and P1 to Q1, if you see this signal, this is a reflected back signal in the direction of a directrix. So, this is nothing but working principle of the operation. If you see the signal F P1, signal F P2 and signal F P3, they are incidenting at a different angles. But if you observe the reflected waves like P1 Q1, P2 Q3 and P3 Q3, they are all parallel to each other and they reach to the directrix at the same point or at the same time, sorry. So, they reach to the directrix at the same time. That's why they all are in same phase which improves the performance of the antenna. That means, 
as the waves are in phase the beam of radiating radiation along the parabolic axis will be strong and concentrated so these are the parabolic reflectors which helps to produce the high directivity with narrow beam, beam width so again i am explaining this mechanism f is a fo focus v is a vertex f fv is a axis of a symmetry right pq are the reflected rays like p1 q1 p2 q2 p3 q3 these are the reflected rays and l represents the line of directrix that means when a feed system or a primary antenna is kept at a focus point f when the signal will incident from feed point f to the reflector antenna or a, we can say parabola then it will be like a signal f p1 f p2 f p3 they are incidenting at different angles but when they are reflecting back from the reflector they all are parallel to each other and they reach to the directrix directrix at the same time at point q1 q2 q3 that means they are all in the same phase that's why it improves the radiation pattern of the antenna this is the working principle of this reflect parabolic reflector antenna that only i have mentioned here the paths fp1 q1 fp2 q2 fp3 q3 are of the same length that means the distance fp1 q1 fp2 q2 and f p3 q3 they all are of a same distance then the reflected wave forms a collimated wave front out of the parabolic shape the ratio of focal length to the aperture that is f by d is known as f over d ratio and it is important parameter of parabolic reflector its value is ranging from 0.25 to 0.50 now the law of reflection says that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflections are equal if i follow this law then it is useful here because it is used along the parabola it helps the beam to be get focus that means improving the radiation pattern now we will see the working para, working of parabolic reflector antenna so here two figures are there figure a and figure b now just suppose if i use my antenna at a receiver side or what will happen and if i put it at a transmitter side then how it will work so in figure a it shows that if i put my parabolic reflector antenna at a transmitter side so this is a focus point that is primary antenna is kept on a feed point so if the primary antenna will radiate the signal on a reflector parabolic reflector side that means this is a parabola so feed point see the the arrow of this arrow direction of this signals that means from feed point they are incidenting on parabolic reflector and after incidenting through parabolic reflector reflector performs the reflection and all signals are going back to the directrix that means it is forming a plane wave front see the direction of the signals from the feed point it is going to the it is going to incident on a reflector then after reflection it's going back to the directrix that means this is the operation at a transmitter side and if you see at the receiver side that means from media it will that means plane wave front will incident on a parabolic reflector which will get reflect back to the focus so these are the exactly opposite operation is happening at a transmitter side and at a receiver side if i want to summarize this that means at a transmitter side the feed element will produce a signal or it will incident on a parabolic reflector then from parabolic reflector it will is going to be reflect and the form of a plane wave front and it is going to be transmit through the media and at a receiver side from the media the signals are coming back in form of a plane wave front they are incidenting on parabolic reflector and they are concentrating at the focus point this is the operation is to be done at a transmitter and receiver side respectively then what is the gain of parabolic antenna so it is given by g is equal to 4 pi a upon lambda square e to the base a now what is a here a is a area of an antenna aperture aperture is the opening part of your parabolic reflector which is also called as a mouth of a parabolic reflector d is a diameter of a parabolic reflector e to the base a is a dimensionless parameter and which is known as the aperture efficiency and whose range is between 0 to 1 maximum it is uh, around 0.55 to 0.70 so this is the gain of uh, antenna and lambda is nothing but what wavelength so if i replace a that is area which is equals to pi d square by 4 for the parabolic structure so if i keep the value of a is equal to pi d square by 4 so overall gain will be equal to pi d into bracket pi d by lambda square into the e to the base a so this is the gain of a parabolic 
antenna. Now, what is a parabolic reflector? Now, in uh, on previously we have seen the parabolic reflector, which is nothing but a 2D structure. But if I want to implement this antenna in a practical, then I have to use this structure in the form of a 3D. That means then it is called as a paraboloid. Now, how this paraboloid is obtained? It is obtained by rotating a parabola around its axis. If I rotate my parabola around its axis, it will form a paraboloid, which is a 3D structure. Now. As the mouth of paraboloid is a circular in shape, the parallel beam produced are the circular cross section and it produces the sharp major lobe and smaller minor lobes. This is the radiation pattern of a parabolic reflector antenna. As we have discussed previously, what is the radiation pattern in my previous videos? Here you can understand the direction is happening more than more in this direction, which is showing in terms of a main lobe. This is a main lobe in through which the directions are moving to this direction in a high quality or in high strength and to the back side of it is or on the side of this origin point these are nothing but the side lobes where the small amount of energy is going to be radiate in all these different directions so the exact direction in which the signals are radiating more these are in the direction of a main lobe so here by using this parabolic reflector antenna we can get the sharp major lobe if you see this the major this main lobe or a major lobe whatever it is this is the main lobe is of a high concentrated and focused in a one particular direction and alert the side lobes are very small as compared to the main beam that means in this direction the energy is getting radiate more as compared to the other directions so this is the advantage of this parabolic reflector antenna now basically there are different types of parabolic reflectors based on its structure they are divided into three points uh, parts first is a cut or a truncated parabolic reflector second is a parabolic right cylinder and third is a pill box which is also called as a cheese antenna now cut or a truncated parabolic reflector in this type if you see this diagram this is the exactly like a paraboloid structure but this dotted lines indicates that this is a cut over there that means the part is not available they are going to be truncated that means it is formed by cutting some portion of a paraboloid this is the complete paraboloid but the dotted line indicates that this is a truncated part of a paraboloid that means it has been cut so this is called as a cut or a truncated parabolic reflector second is a parabolic right cylinder so if you see here which is obtained by moving the parabola sideways that means if i move it in a sideways it will form a cylindrical structure so what is the uh, logic about this that we have seen in parabolic antenna there was a focal point so here in cylindrical structure there will be focal line focal line instead of a focal point and similarly there will be a vertex line instead of a vertex so this is the structure of a parabolic right cylinder what is the use of this because of this structure energy is collimated at a line which is parallel to axis which is parallel to axis through focal point of a reflector so this is the good point about this parabolic reflector antenna now the third part is nothing but for or a type is a pill box which is also called as cheese antenna this is a short parabolic right cylindrical enclosed by the parallel plates it's a cylindrical only but it is enclosed by the parallel plates with help of this there is a it is useful in producing the wide beam in one of the plane while narrowing other so we can improve the radiation pattern with help of this antenna this type of a structure now there are different feed methods which can be used to feed this parabolic reflector antenna so what is the feed feed means what the primary source or the primary antenna which is kept at a feed point or a focal point of an antenna which is going to feed the signal to my overall antenna so the antenna which is kept at a primary or a focal point this is called as a primary antenna which is also known as a feed radiator or simply we can call it as a feed so mostly this feed antenna can be horn in structure it can be a simple dipole in the structure or it can be the combination of a dipole antenna and different parasitic reflectors like yagi uda antenna or horn antenna so this method helps to me to improve the radiation pattern or different characteristics as per my application so this is the assumption that ideally the feed radiates entire energy towards the reflector and no energy is radiated in unwanted directions that means we know that the energy is going to be radiated from the primary antenna to secondary antenna or i can say that the energy is going to be radiated from the feed antenna to the reflector antenna and 
there is an assumption that the, while radiating this energy from the primary antenna to secondary antenna, the other directional energy which is radiated is a zero. That means there is no energy radiated in, in unwanted direction. This is a ideal condition. But practically it does not occur. So thus the feed is more important part. So feed is moved along with the main axis then beam gets a rod end. So these are the different feed structures. If I want to keep the feed in terms of a dipole then there is a difference between the dipole and reflector is of a 0.4 lambda. Here in this diagram we can arrange the feed in terms of an entire array of a dipoles and in this picture it is shown that the feed element is used as a horn antenna with help of a waveguide. So uh, there are two basically feed methods are there. Kassergen feed system and Grognan feed system and offset feed system. So in Kassergren feed system, uh, this is the feed system in which the basic structure we will study from this figure which is available over here. So the feed is located at the vertex of a paraboloid instead of a focus. Now in previously we have seen that normally there was a focus over here. This was a vertex point of my antenna. This is the reflector sheet of my antenna. So in this feed system, the feed is located at the vertex point. See this here in this diagram. The feed is located at this vertex point instead of keeping it over the focus point. So this is the speciality of this Cassegrain system. And a convex shaped reflector which acts as a hyperboloid is placed opposite to feed of the antenna. If you see here, there is a convex structure exactly in front of a feed element or we can call as a primary antenna which is kept at a vertex point of a antenna. So, which is also known as a secondary hyperboloid reflector or a sub-reflector or Kassergen secondary reflector. So, the feed is placed such that it's one of the foci coincidence with the focus of the paraboloid. Thus, the wave gets reflected twice. The primary radiator is generally horn antenna. The primary antenna which is used for this uh, feeding system is generally a horn antenna. And the aperture efficiency in this case, we will get about... 65 to 70 percent. So again I am giving the speciality over here. The feed element is kept at a vertex of antenna instead of keeping it to the focus point of an antenna. That means the feed is kept at a vertex point and at the focus point there will be a hyperboloid convex reflector circuit will be available which will help to reflect the twice. So this is the one uh, simple picture. In this picture this is a feed element here there is a one convex reflector placed at a focus point. Second is a Gregorian feed system. Here the convex, this is exactly similar to that of Kassergrain feed system. But instead of keeping a convex structure at a focus point, they are keeping the concave reflector. So otherwise it is exactly similar to the previous feed system. So, this is the convex shaped hyperboloid of a Kasser grain is replaced with the concave shaped hyperboloid reflector which is a, of course smaller in a size. So, we can assume that this is the smaller, uh, there is a, this reflector is a smaller in structure in this case and thus the aperture efficiency improved from previously it was uh, 65 to 70, now it is nearly about 70 percent. So, we can achieve through this feed system. Now, the third feed system is nothing but offset feed system. This is the most widely used system because of its more advantages as compared to previous two systems. So, we will see what it is. In previous systems, we have studied that primary antenna blocks the central portion of the aperture which increases the minor lobes. We have seen that. Suppose now in this example, if you see in this diagram, see this antenna is hiding some part of a reflector in a center. So, to avoid this problem, we are changing the symmetry of my reflector antenna with the feed. So, the feed is offset. The here, why it is called as an offset feed? Because in this type, the feed is offset from the center of the actual antenna dish used. If you see here in this diagram, this is the reflector part and this is the feed part. So, from the center, it has been offset to the one particular point to avoid the radiation to get blocked from the center point of a reflector. Thus, we can say that the system will get improved radiation pattern. So, the reflector used in this type of feed system are asymmetrical to segment. That means they are not symmetrical over this axis. So, these feed antennas are located to one side of the reflector surface 
this is the reflector surface and this is the one side one sided kept we can call it as a fluid element or a primary antenna uh, previously it was kept exactly in the middle of a reflector circuit but now it is kept at one side of a reflector circuit that means it is offset from the symmetry of the reflector circuit which helps to move the fit structure out of the beam path in this way it does not block the beam so that the improvement will be in the radiation pattern of the antenna this is a simple structure in this left side the figure this is a reflector part and the feed is kept not to the symmetrical to the center of this parabolic reflector but is on a offset position from the parabolic reflector so this uh, type of a feeding is widely used in home satellite television antennas the offset feed is also used in a multiple reflector designs such as castlegrain and grigron because the small reflector would also suffer the same issues now what are the advantage disadvantage and applications of the parabolic reflector antennas so the advantages are more as compared to disadvantages the advantage is that it reduces the minor lobes we have seen in previous diagram the major lobe was uh, very much concentrated in one direction and it was huge in size but as compared to it the minor lobe was very small or it is reduced so improving the radiation pattern then wastage of power is reduced as i said that there is a less number of minor lobes or a side lobe automatically the wastage of power is reduced then in this type of antenna we can get the equivalent focal length can be achieved and this feed that means feed position can be placed any location according to our convenience like previously in previous feed system castle grain like we have seen that the feed has been kept at the symmetrical point of a or a middle point of your parabolic reflector but in the last type that is offset type it has been kept on one side of a reflector so that feed position we can relocate in this type of uh, antennas then next is adjustment of a beam that means we can adjust the beam whether i want it as a narrow or a wide beam which is to be done by the adjusting the reflecting surfaces then the aperture efficiency is high which is in the order of a 65 to 70% can be achieved but some disadvantages are also with it so what is the disadvantage it is that the power that gets reflected from the parabolic reflector is obstructed or blocked by the hyperbolaid so that kind of a obstruction can be available which can be become a problem with a small dimension parabolaid used so for small dimension this is a problem but not that much for not serious for the high dimensional parabolaids the next disadvantage is that it is not suitable to use at a low frequencies that means we know the relation between the frequency and the wavelength that is v is equal to n lambda so that means the frequency is inversely proportional to the lambda that means wavelength so as if i decrease the frequency if i if i use it at the low frequencies the wavelength will get increase which will cause to make the diameter of a circular aperture become very high which is practically uh, difficult to manage so to reduce the dimension we need a small wavelength that means small wavelength means i have to use it at a high frequencies so that is a disadvantage of this antenna that means i cannot use it, uh, it is not appropriate to use it at a low frequencies and what are the applications of this parabolic reflector antennas mainly they are used in satellite communication like tv home appliances also used in wireless telecommunication systems and in radar applications so we will stop here thank you